Might as well talk to Catherine right now. And Astra Avisosk. We meet again, you two. Hi, Catherine. Do you have any commissions for us today? Commissions, huh? Hmm. Let me think. Oh, how about this? Please attend the Academia's Academic Symposium this afternoon and recite a love poem on stage. Uh, wait, say what now? Oh, uh, all right then, I'll uh, write a love poem from me to you, Catherine. It's gonna be about you, Catherine, how you feel about that. And if possible, please also use your camera to capture the reaction of the audience upon finishing the poem. How about, how about I catch your, how about I catch your reaction? I recite my love poem about you. Ho ho ho. Huh? What kind of commission is that? Also, I feel... Uh, also, I feel embarrassed uh, just imagining it. I see. It appears that you're not interested in this commission. In that case, please go to Port Armos and convince the Eremites there to spend some time volunteering at the local orphanage. Hey, that's not any better. Um... Mercenaries and come on now, mercenaries and orphan uh, orphanages don't really go together. Come on now, don't know the mercenaries. Maybe maybe you like the orphanages, or maybe they are from the orphanages. You never know. Like you literally never know. Uh, mean you ne never know. I'm just gonna go with the first one. I'm sure the mercenaries will have some interesting reactions as well. Uh, Paimon's gonna ask. Just who exactly has been submitting these commissions to the Adventurers Guild? Yeah, that's, I don't think the mercenaries even care. Or rather, they don't mind. Like, they're not going to be making money, but still. I don't think they mind. Or maybe they will. You, you never know. You never know. Oh, the commissioner? Hmm, well, actually, I just wanted to see the two of you in action. You're neither, aren't you? Actually, you're not actually Catherine, are you? <laughs> was it so obvious? I was hoping you would actually take one of those commissions. That kind of chance to observe humans doesn't come by often. Ah, so it's Nahida. Paimon just knew Catherine wouldn't crack those kinds of jokes. When did you get into her head? <sighs> From when she said... Add Astra Adasosk? So it's been you this whole time? Uh, are you done resting up, Nahida? Yes. I've been sleeping ever since we parted ways. And I even had a really, really long dream. What did you dream about? It was another dream about the Subzerus Festival. So except it was a happy one. In my dream, I was sitting in the middle of a flower terrace. And everyone in Sumeria City was holding hands as they danced in circles around me. They danced round and round, and everyone looked really happy. I also got to sit on a gigantic flower carriage. Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, raised me really, really high above the ground. And I was throwing an endless amount of Yalda candies at the children. You know, Nahida, maybe your dream is how the Subzerus Festival really should be. It's meant to be a joyous time where everyone gets together to celebrate your birthday. Yeah, but in reality, no, no, just, just, yeah, yeah. Huh? Wasn't I describing a really happy dream? Why are you both looking at me like that? Wait, could this be an example of the emotion known as pity? No, no, we are pitying you. That would only make everything worse. We just don't want you to feel too sad. By the way, have you had a chance to visit Dunyarzad? How's she doing? The Homiyanis haven't allowed any visitors after the festival, so we haven't been able to check on her. Yes, I paid her a visit right after I woke up. She was resting at the time. Her condition is stabilized. However, since Elazar is a manifestation of the withering on the human body, we can only cure it by finding a way to take care of Ermin Salt's own withering. But for the moment, our top focus should still be figuring out what the sages are up to and what they're planning. 
Right. Who knows what will happen if they manage to pull off another scheme like the Samsara of the Subzeru's Festival. So our first priority should be investigating and putting a stop to the Sage's activities. As for how we should pull that off, let's discuss it somewhere else. There are too many adventurers around here. Oh, good point. Uh, sorry adventurers, we're gonna be borrowing Catherine for a little while. I want... I want just no one. Okay, so do you have any ideas on how we can investigate the sages, Nahida? Actually, I've already done a little bit of work on that. But for now, I want to hear your thoughts. Hmm... Let's see, Possessa... Uh, hmm... Okay, this one's a little... This doesn't even... This one's like, uh, heading... Like... Right... <laughs> a little too far, a little too far. This one... Hmm... I don't know. Uh, we could grab someone close to the stages and question them. I, I don't know what I mean by grab. But... Uh... Hmm. I don't feel like shaking people. I don't feel like it doesn't sound a little wrong. And this is just hanging a little too far. A little too far. Let's possess someone! I already tried that. But all the key members Damn of it. the academia, even the core of 30 guards, intentionally avoid wearing their Akasha terminals. It seems that from hmm. the very beginning. They've been guarding against info leaks from the Akasha. Of course, it could also be because they're weary of me. Have you already caught the Sage's attention? I'm guessing not yet. But this trusting me would make perfect sense if they've ever paid attention to the urban legends about me. In any case, I probably can't take over their minds directly. Yeah, I figured. Also, possessing a student. Okay, that's that's stretching things a little too far, and I don't want to put a student in danger. Oh, handle what? We're in the dark as of now. Since we still don't know anything about their goals, any rash move could tip them off and lead to terrible consequences. After all, every person in Sumeru City is one of their hostages. All right. Well, I guess we're possessing a student. No way. That's too risky. I agree. I mean, it'd be too easy to get caught? No, it's not that. We shouldn't involve innocent students in this. I, A single mistake could completely ruin their lives. I agree. I, I'm glad we're on the same page, Nida. I'm glad I'm gonna pull for you. I'm glad. Anyways, continue. Doing that would be ignoring the safety of my people for my own selfish goals. How is that any different from what the sages are doing? That's a good point. Spoken like the god of Tamaru. Well, I'm stumped. Hmm. Are we really out of ideas? Nahida, you're super smart, so you already have something in mind, right? Don't keep us in suspense. Spill the beans already. According to a popular theory from the Bahumana Darshan of the Academia, Rejecting impractical motions at the beginning of a planning session will give more weight to the actual proposal. Okay, okay, but aren't you the god of wisdom? You don't have to use that kind of gimmick to make us take your ideas seriously. Well, I've been thinking that if I can't directly possess the leaders, and if I can't get ordinary people involved, then I should find someone who's already involved, but hasn't decided to side with the sages. You're saying we should recruit a spy? Hmm... That does sound like it could work. Oh! Before coming back, we met someone named Alhatham. He seems like he acts alone, and he likes doing stuff behind the Academia's back. They probably aren't in cahoots. Actually, I already have someone in mind. Do you still remember that female scholar named Sataria? Oh? Huh? Sataria? Paimon remembers now! She's oh. the one who's always trailing behind the Grand Sage of the Academia. We ran into her basically every time the Subzeros Festival repeated itself. 
You could even say we're old enemies by now. Paimon still remembers the smug and mean way she always spoke to Nilu. Mm-hmm. They've always liked observing all kinds of people, and Sitaria has always stood out from the crowd. She was born in the desert and was hailed as their greatest genius. Her academic gifts allowed her special admission into the academia and also gave her the opportunity to serve as the sage's assistant. Oh, Paimon didn't know she was from the desert. She must be pretty special then. Paimon feels like most of the desert dwellers around the city are working as mercenaries. The name Sitaria means star. When she lived in the desert, she shone like the brightest star in the night sky. Later on, she was chosen by the sun. The star was given a place in the daytime sky to complement the sun's dazzling light. Soon after, the star witnessed the sun scorching the earth, which brought forth many disasters. The star began to waver. Instead of staying beside such a sun, wouldn't it be better to return and light up part of the night sky? But in the end, she couldn't give up the radiance of daytime. To cope with her shame, the star buried her. This should be Sataria's favorite fortune telling spot. And the only one. So, should we ask the fortune teller about Sataria? No, I already have enough information on Sataria. The most important thing now is for you to pay attention to the vendor's talking style and key characteristics. Talking style and key characteristics? My poor lost lambs. Have you become troubled over your fates? The divine voice of wisdom often echoes between mine ears. If thou be blessed today by the gods, I may be able to show you the way. Huh? Really? Nahida, you've been whispering things to her? Shh! <clears throat> My friend here has some doubts regarding her future. Can we get a fortune reading for her? Hmm... <laughs> of course, of course! In that case... <laughs> oh, you're, you're a us now! <laughs> It would seem that Harut and Marut are quite wary of you. Perhaps, at some time in the past, you have somehow offended the gods. Well, only one of them. Only mocking the god of Animo, questioning the lord of Geo's financial savviness, and brawling with the god of Electro. Do those count? Um, I think only one of those count. Also, quit it. Hmm? <laughs> quit my mind. Uh, nothing. Go on, pick an aspect for her to divine. Hmm. Uh, eeny me, that forget. Head prospects, no problem at all. Oh. She just, she just say oh. <laughs> the gods have spoken. The truth shall be revealed. Your life shall continue on for. For... Huh? Many... Many tens of thousands of years? Impossible. I knew I was a god. Marut, Marut, did you two spoil my divination? I've never read a fortune so absurd. Uh, actually, Paimon thinks this is probably the most accurate fortune telling you've ever done. <clears throat> I admit that the orientation of today's celestial matrix is uh, suboptimal. As such, there will be no charge. Hooray! So, well, that can't be helped. If you were to bring some food offerings for Hart and Mart on your next visit, perhaps they could help you reverse the wheels of fate. No, 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 I'm good. Or maybe I'm not. Maybe living for a long time isn't a good thing. Oh, you know what? I'm just gonna leave a flower for you, cats. Um, there you go. There you go. Change my fate. Oh, also, I'm going the wrong way. Is 
Is this another one of Centaria's favorite stalls? Yep. It belongs to a king. His father helped Sataria a lot when she first moved to Samari City, so she still comes by whenever she has time. When I start talking with them, listen carefully to the details of our conversation. Ah, dear customers. Would you like to look at some pottery? We caught wind of your great craftsmanship, so we specifically came to take a look. Oh, I recognize you. Aren't you Miss Catherine from the Adventurer's Guild? <laughs> Sounds like I'm in for some big business. Speaking of, where did you learn this trade? I suppose you could say it all started with my dad. He's a mason by trade, but I picked up an interest in clay while apprenticing for him. After that, I began making pottery by myself in secret. And I simply changed trades when my works turned out well. Although it's a pity that I'm no longer making much use of the knowledge provided to me by the Akasha. That's nice. You're making a living doing something you love. Hmm. So is your father still working as a mason? Oh, no, not anymore. A few years back, he fell from a roof and broke his leg. Since he had already saved enough mora over all these years, he's just enjoying the retired life in Port Ormos nowadays. I see. We wish him peace and happiness in his retirement. I'll have someone in charge of logistics at the guild come by another day for some goods. We'll leave you to it. Take care now. No problem. Rest easy, all our goods are sure to meet your every need. Next on the agenda... This should be our final stop. Sitaria is always thinking of this restaurant when she's working at the Academia. So she always comes by whenever she's out in the city. Nahida, you've really thought of everything! <laughs> it's my duty to protect Samira's citizens, after all. Hi there. I feel like I've seen you down by the docks before. Huh? Sorry, I don't quite remember. If I recall, you were having a discussion with someone about shipbuilding at the time. Ah... Uh... That's right! I've always been really interested in feats of marine engineering. After all, I grew up in Liyue Harbor and spent my entire childhood staring at the ships going in and out of the port. I came to Sumeru to study, but failed to make it into the academia due to my lack of talent. But I'm still discussing all kinds of problems with different scholars. And I'm continuing to study and perform research from the restaurant's basement. I'm sure I'll get to the Academia after their next round of exams. What an admirable spirit for learning. Amazing! Uh, sure. But you'll find hardworking people wherever you go. So this restaurant has a basement as well? Huh. First I've heard of it. That's right. It's not usually open to patrons. Most of the time, employees use it for breaks or to hold private events. I see. <laughs> yes, that makes sense. Well, good luck with your studies, Miss Chishan. <laughs> Thank you so much. As long as I can make it into the academia as an official student, I'll be happy. All right, now what? <laughs> faces should be enough for Sataria. Uh, what's the point of all the information we've collected? Nahida, you still haven't told us how you're planning to make Sataria face her problems. Sataria is already used to avoiding her problems, so we must find a way to break through her usual sensibilities. I remember that you mentioned that the Aramites in Port Ormos are all making a fuss about the upcoming resurrection of the Scarlet King. Although it's all just a boatload of nonsense, the faith of her homeland may turn out to be Sataria's soft spot. Oh, Paimon gets it now! You want to take advantage of the guilt Sataria feels about her homeland! 
Although she knows she should return home to help the people of the desert, all she's done is conspire with the sages. Hmm, so if King Deshred was to uh, criticize Satoria's actions, Ellipses. Hmm. So, how do we set that up? Well, the Scarlet King is long gone, and Satoria is also too smart to fall for any simple tricks. If we simply engaged her under the guise of the Scarlet King's believers, she would definitely be weary of us, and we may not get anywhere. But, if we were to borrow some of her close acquaintances to talk with her, her reaction would probably be very different. So, you mean you're going to possess those people we just talked to? Yep. Possess them through the Akasha. Imply that they've already converted to the faith of the Scarlet King. And then convey our made-up will of the Scarlet King. As long as everything goes smoothly, we'll get through to Sataria for sure. She'll never guess that we had anything to do with it. Ah, so that's how you're going to use all the info we collected on these people. It's so that you won't slip up and break form. Possessing them will only work if you can manage to pass off as them. Exactly. So, best of luck with impersonating them. Uh. Huh? Best of luck? But we don't know how to possess anyone. I heard that. But that's no problem at all. I'll just share all their senses with you once I've possessed them. As long as you're also wearing an Akasha terminal, the effect will basically be as if you've possessed them yourself. Hmm. Ah, that is pretty convenient. But why does she have to do this? Can't you do it yourself? Although I've been observing humans for a while, I've never been good at imitating them. Hmm. <laughs> you're not wrong. It's always been painfully obvious whenever you try to pass as Catherine. Never good at imitating as them. Neither are you. Are you a robot too? Uh, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll try my best, I guess. If it was at all possible, I would have preferred to leave these people alone. But seeing how things are now, I probably should just accept it and push on. Yeah. Don't beat yourself up over it. We're only doing this to help everyone, and we'll only be borrowing them for a little while anyway. All right, then let's give it a go tomorrow afternoon. Uh, uh, uh oh. Well, I guess I'm coming back. I I could just stop time, but you know what? Hmm. But after stop time, I'm gonna you know, move time along. Um, you know what? I'm just gonna do that. I'm just gonna move time along. Also, uh, give me a sec. Okay. Looks like they've already started talking. Let's find a hiding spot and get started. Oh, time for the min transition. Time for the mini games. Time for the mini games. Mini game. Oh. That's right. You really can't force anything when it comes to love. And besides, everyone around me has a very different background and outlook. Uh, are you still listening to me, <coughs> Lydia? Oh, How's she not know? Of course I'm listening. You were talking about troubles with your love life, right? I heard everything you said. <sighs> okay, then. You just seemed a little distracted she, for a moment. How did she not notice her getting knocked out all over? Knocked out and around. Strange. Your cats seem pretty worked up. Is something wrong? No, nothing. You just witnessed the... Uh... Like quiet, happy kitties. Oh, what are their names again? Hmm. Oh, God. I sure remembered. Uh... Uh, uh, uh. Mm. Oh God, looking. Also, how did she not witness me, you know, having a bit of a seizure there? What the heck? Uh, I wasn't actually paying attention. No, no, whatever. That's right. They are just little darlings, aren't they? Harut and Marut. I will think very carefully about his demand of me. I'm sorry. I must go now. Uh, wait! You forgot the pay! 
Come back. <gasps> Empty. Just like the soul. <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> it's okay. I just got caught up in something. Oh, actually, didn't you ask me to help you look for work? What kind of work were you looking for again? Gardening or no masonry. Oh, right. Your old man's craft. How could I forget? Speaking of, how's he doing? Is he feeling any better? Well, he's feeling a lot better. He can uh, walk more now. Walk more um... oh, That's good to hear. I have been thinking a lot about him. If I could get some more time off, I'd love to pay him a visit. Actually, while we're talking about him, is he still living in Port Ormos? Yes. Yeah, he's been retired there for a while. If you could find the time, please write him a letter. Please pass on that recently, faith in the Scarlet King has taken root in Port Ormos and has begun to spread across Sumeru. He has a quick temper, and has always been a devout follower of the Dendro Archon. I don't want him to get into a fight with those Scarlet King believers because of a difference in beliefs. Oh? So, who are you siding with in all of this? The Academia or the Scarlet King? Uh, I... <sighs> I'm so jealous of you. You were born a child of the desert. Yet you chose to betray the Scarlet King, and now you spend all your time with those crooks from the Academia. Akeem? You don't mean... you've also become a believer of the Scarlet King? What's so strange about becoming a believer of the wise Scarlet King? In fact, aren't you the strange one? The one who still can't pick a side? C can't pick a side? Me? Whoa! Paimon had no idea you'd be so good at this! Hmm... Well, I knew it! I really started getting to this role. I was too harsh, was I? You really zeroed in on the issue and put it right in front of her. It might feel a bit overwhelming for Sataria. But once everything is over, I'll be sure to pay her a visit to her mind and explain everything. Anyway, let's keep going. Yeah... But uh, also, ah, uh, palm tree. You should follow your heart. Also, you know what? We'll make this a little better if she, uh, the guard actually goes back to her and goes like, "Mister, you okay?" Or something like that. Just a, just, just to drive it home. Drive home the insanity. Anyways. You won't necessarily lose your research opportunities by facing the truth. Besides, did you really want to conduct your research while carrying such heavy feelings of guilt? <sighs> How do you know me so well? Are you truly just a believer of the Scarlet King? Or are you the god himself? That's not important. The important thing is to pass judgment on the Academia and its sages, and to correct their mistakes. If you could provide some assistance in this matter, perhaps it could serve as a form of atonement. I've actually never believed in the gods, but I've always believed in serendipity. Your appearance must be a fated opportunity for me to get out of this wretched situation. Please tell me, what can I do for you? Well, great. We finally convinced her. <clears throat> How much do you know about the Sage's current activities? I was just one of the designers for the Mast Dream Harvest Scheme, which is what happened around the Subzerus Festival. But I know very little about the full scope of the overall project. I'd assume that only staff with the highest clearance would have access to those confidential documents. I've just been working to meet the Grand Sage's specified requirements. However, there's something that's been really bothering me. I heard that a scholar who was previously expelled has returned to the city. And even the Sages are still quite wary of him. And now, Kaz, even the Sages are still worried of? Oh. To fight against the Academia, we will need to figure out the nature and the purpose of their work. Is there a way for us to get access to the confidential documents you mentioned? It should be possible if we're willing to take some risks. After all, I'm an assistant to the Grand Sage, and I've been working on many tasks outside of the project. One thing, though, I won't be able to transfer the documents to you through the Akasha once I get my hands on them. The Sages have always closely monitored all activities within the Akasha. Um, let me see... 
let's use the most primitive method. Send someone to pick up the documents tomorrow evening at the Academia entrance. The Academia entrance? Wouldn't that be too conspicuous? Don't worry about that. I assure you, this won't be a trap. I'm only suggesting this location because it'll draw more scrutiny for me to leave the Academia again. It'll be safest for me to distract the guards long enough to hand you the documents. All right, I trust you. So, uh, if I were to successfully complete this task, would it mean I've atoned for my wrongdoings? Um, that'll depend on the judgment of the Dendro Archon. The Dendro Archon? That's right. Her people are the ones we have endangered. As the God of Wisdom, she's also the one responsible for judging and guiding the scholars. Maybe it's time for me to find a god to believe in. Just as Nahida predicted, we've managed to bring Sataria to our side! The Traveler's execution was ingenious. She's the one who deserves all the praise. Well, now that we've made plans to meet again tomorrow evening, all we can do is pray for Sataria's mission to go off without a hitch. Hey, but if we're going to pray to the gods, aren't we just praying to you? God of wisdom and guardian of the scholars? Me? No, no. The truth is the true guardian of scholars. I've always believed that. Anyway, let's meet again tomorrow evening at the Adventurer's Guild. Desert. 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 Oh! I'm gonna be a, gonna be a desert bandit. Or rob those people. It'll be like uh, Black Desert Online. Stabilize. We're gonna be a, we're, we're gonna go red. Kill these people, and then I'm just gonna run around the desert and just PvP forever. All sorts of stuff. Do you even care, huh? Do you even care? Well, you know what? What the heck? Ah! Okay, he cared. Yeah, good hit. Also, yeah, you better, you better back off. You don't want to get PK'd. Yeah, time to live my life as a PKer. In the desert. Boss man. Also. Hmm. You know what this reminds me of that, uh... You know, like that one boss from Near Replicant? That might remind me even more. Um... Oh, and... Let's actually switch back to... Hmm... You. Let's go! Alright, what, what does this boss do? Hmm. Catalyzed reactions or. Hmm. Whatever. Up the. Okay, I can't shoot that. That's that was a crystal. I don't even remember. Leave me alone. Here, go, 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 baby, like that. Okay, that was a mistake on my part. I don't know what I'm doing. It's our first boss. Oh. I'll take this. Okay, that didn't work at all. Just real, I just forgot I'm still using Hamiyumi. But it doesn't matter because you're kicking his ass. Come on. Solidify. How are you? Oh, hello.
That's not the edge. Vampire. triumphant hero returns at last and to a rather spectacular welcome even if i do say so myself you're the outcast expelled from the academia indeed i am although these days they tend to call me the doctor whoa <laughs> if you're looking for your researcher friend she has already been taken into confinement with some basic caution, she could have discovered the listening device on her person. Clearly, she lacks the degree of rigor expected of a true scholar. <sighs> the people of Samir City! What have you done to them? I simply made some minor adjustments to their Akasha terminals. Now they can deposit information directly into the subconscious. As you can see, all these lovely people now believe this traveler is a hero who has just saved the world. <laughs> My experiment is a success. And now it seems they can no longer hold back their sheer adoration. Uh, no, what should we do? These are all just regular people. It's just like Metal Gear Solid. You need to get out of here. What? That guy's a Fatui Nor can I abandon the people of Samaru. Don't worry, we'll meet again outside of the city. I see. You appear to have overridden their mental faculties with your own consciousness. To possess such a powerful mind, you must be... the God of Wisdom. And then he took the Gnosis. Great. That's how it always ends, right? Take the Gnosis. Catch your breath first. Uh, is the Hida going to be okay? We only made it out because of her. Oh, she'll be fine. It's just that she's gonna lose the noses, but uh, she'll be fine. Paimon wasn't counting on running into a new Harbinger here, let alone such a high-ranking one. That guy was number two. So scary. Mm, he called himself the Doctor. Remember, Tainari told us about him. Sataria did say that someone who once got expelled from the Academia came back recently. And that even the Sages are weary of him. Yep, sounds like she must have been talking about the Doctor. Well, we, under well, we didn't underestimate the number of parties involved because, well, we knew... Well, I knew that the Fatui, uh, the Fatui had, something, had something to do with this, but, uh... We underestimate the scale, definitely. In the picture, we're no longer just dealing with the academia, they're in cahoots with the Fatui. But what are the Fatui after this time? Another Gnosis? Ding ding ding, and also we need to find Naida. Yeah, things would be a lot easier with Nahida's help. Nahida said we'll meet again outside of the city, but we can't just keep waiting around, right? Hmm, let's start our own investigation. Let's go find Tenari. Oh, right! Wasn't he invited by the sages to work on some project when we were staying with him in the Vidya Forest? That has to be the same project! Even though he turned it down at the time, he might still know something. There's no time to lose. Let's go to Gundarvaville! Yep, let's. 
Uh, now I have to go. Seriously, I'm seriously bad. He took the, he took the uh, gnosis. Well, now he's trying to cover for us. Bad. We're way behind schedule. Uh, go away, go away. We need help. Oh, it's the traveler and Paimon. What are you two doing back here? Hooray! It's nice to see you again. Are you doing all right? I... To be honest, I'm not doing too well. My Elazar has been progressing at a faster rate lately. I'm finding it harder to complete more intricate tasks. As a result, Master Tainari is taking me off the patrol schedule. He will only allow me to stay here and coordinate other people's tasks. Oh, Kale! Seems that curing Irmersul is our only chance. But how? How? Of Tainari, did he go off on patrol? We're here to talk to him. Oh, Master Tainari? You just left the Avidia Forest a little while ago. He was headed to Party's DI. Huh? He left? But isn't Tainari always saying that he never wants to leave the Avidia Forest? He even turned down the Sage's invitation. I thought it was weird too. Master Tainari always prioritizes his work as a forest watcher above everything. He almost never leaves his post. He left in a hurry this time, though. He didn't give a reason? No, I only found out that he left through a message he left behind. He also made sure to delegate all his tasks using a schedule. <sighs> to leave in such a hurry? I'd guess he had something urgent to take care of. Hmm. Master Tainari originally studied in the Amorta Darshan of the Academia, and part of the eye is something like the Amorta's research base. Many rare shrubs and grasses have been planted there for research. I know that before he became a forest watcher, Master Tainari once spent a long time conducting research at Party's DI. A research base, huh? Gotta wonder what kind of research Tainari just decided to work on all of a sudden. Oh, we don't have a lot of time, so let's go look for him at Party's DI. Hmm, take care of yourself, Cole. Uh, you should better. Don't worry. I'm fine. I'm used to living with Elazar by now. If you run into Master Tainari, please send him my regards. Oh, okay. Got it. Will do. See you later, Kale. Oh, let's go to Perry's DI. We've already been there before, I think. Um, oh, there? Yeah, yeah, we have. Ambush. You were not ambush a child now, would you? Uh, Catherine. Thank goodness you're okay. We were so worried about you. You haven't been reprogrammed by the doctor, are you? Uh, have you? Hmm. Hey, this was supposed to be a touching reunion, but you're ruining the moment. Hmm. Actually, it's very smart of the traveler to be wary of me right now. After all, the doctor has shown that his technology can apparently even control human minds. Plus, it's not like you could have known what happened after we split up and I was facing the doctor by myself. Even a pool of stagnant water after a torrential storm can occasionally pass as a patch of sky. Hmm. Paimon feels like only the real Nahida could come up with such an obscure analogy. Sure. Also, try your pockets. I need to see if you still have your, uh, gnosis. Also, I agree. Huh? But I wasn't trying to win your trust or anything. All I wanted was to clarify my point. Well, we understand that point now. Please, Nahida, tell us more about what happened. Are those poor people all right? When you left, I was still in the middle of restoring everyone's minds. Thankfully, when the doctor mentioned depositing information into the subconscious, he didn't mean engraving information into their minds. Instead, he did something closer to creating hallucinations. That was still within my power to fix. Luckily, I managed to finish my restorations and mind jump away from him just as he was about to capture me. Whew. What a relief. The doctor sure pulled out some hidden cards, but good thing we had Nahida with us. 
I wouldn't be relieved just yet. I gave away my true identity when I restored everyone's minds, which means we've lost another one of our trump cards. Also, the doctor is already an expert at modifying Akasha terminals. Maybe it's only a matter of time until he captures my consciousness inside the Akasha. Would that mean you'd no longer be able to jump between minds? Then how do we stop him? He's still at the Academia, so it's possible he already started messing with the Akasha. Need to hurry! Hurry! Ugh, it feels like he's toying with us. What a nasty piece of... Wait, no. Did you already finish your training and reach Pari Porno Life? <laughs> what do you think? My consciousness has already managed to make contact with the Divine. Mm. You did it? Congratulations! Hmm, truly amazing. Also, I got bad feelings. If Night Dog has bad feelings, then so do I. <laughs> it's so exhilarating to share this sublime joy with others at long last. When my consciousness made contact with the gods, Ah, oh, what a supreme and unparalleled experience that was. That sounds incredible! Um... So, hmm... We're for Chignari. Oh, alright. Actually, please wait. I haven't forgotten my promise to you. Remember? I promised to help you understand what you saw from Ermansoul once I gained deeper insights. My current self has not only gained true insight, but I can even help you establish a direct connection to the consciousness of the Divine. You... you can do that? Well, how about now you believe in her? I've never heard of anything like that, but... If you want to give it a try, I'll do my best to protect your consciousness during the process. Hold on. I brought some spirit borneal with me. This is still a crucial part of the ceremony. Uh, we're using that incense again? All right now. Hold my hand. I'll help you establish a pathway to connect your consciousness. Okay. Ready? It took three betrayals for me to finally understand. The world is just an elaborate tapestry of lies. My fury will never be quelled. The first to betray me was a god, my creator, my mother. Valuing strength above all, she saw no worth in me, and I was discarded. The second was a human. My family. My friend. Consumed by fear, he saw me as an abomination. The third was one exactly like me. A hope for the future. A fledgling barely out of the nest. Powerless before his mortality, he broke his promise to me. Humans, they can't be trusted. And the gods fill me with pure loathing. So I said good riddance. <laughs> I denounced the world and laugh in its face. <laughs> My chest will never again be defiled by worldly filth. I will scrub away every last trace of human emotion. Then it will be empty, a blank slate, and ready to receive a supreme gnosis, brimming with pure divinity. <laughs> Your era 
is coming to an end. That's a messed up uh, image, uh, lady. What was that? A very messed up, a very messed up image. No, it's not as a greater lord's consciousness, nor uh, King Deshret's consci uh, consciousness. Did we actually just see the Balladeer's memories? Everything matches what we know about him. But how is he connected to the divine consciousness that Hapasia was talking about? You saw it, right? You felt it, right? Oh, such a majestic god! Such a noble will! Such sublime emotion! I... Alas, shame. If only... I almost feel like we're looking at diff uh, two different gods here. Or maybe she's looking at the same god and has a... That's a bit of a fangirlgasm with that guy. I don't know. If only that which beats within my chest wasn't a filthy mortal heart. Never mind. Oh, great and merciful God. Please grant me forgiveness and salvation. Do you understand now? I'm afraid this is no peri porn of life, but rather... Someone, someone literally fangirling over him. Over an edgy... Boy, wake up. You, why are you so mean to me? Why is everyone hiding from me? I found divine wisdom. Shouldn't I receive praise and honor? Haven't I uncovered that light in the darkness? Nope, you've been tricked. You've been tricked. That's how I always thought everything should be. Wait, have I? Already lost my mind? No, just, just tricked. Also, ellipses. Yeah, no, you're just tricked. Go back. Uh. Wait, something isn't right. Ambush. See, ambush. Someone died. Gundam. Let's go kill it. We finally made it to Caravan Rebot. It's pretty lively here. So, just past this wall is the desert, huh? Oh, wow. Paimon remembers hearing people call this the Wall of Samiel. It's made to block sandstorms from the outside. Oh? Oh, if it's this tall, it's gotta be the divine work of Greater Lord Ruka Devata, right? Samiel? An angel made this? Also, truly awe inspiring. Enough gawking. Come on, follow me. Okay, let's go. Huh? It's just how I them. Come on. Let's, let's, he's, he's been leading us here. Come on, let's go. Let's follow him. Over here. Okay. Also, why are you looking at us? I think we're just looking at us for some reason. Oh, he's going that way. Let's hurry up and follow him. I wonder what he's up to. Hey, wait for me. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, I catch up with you. What the... where did she go? 
Uh, how did we lose them? They were just here a second ago. More Aramite mercenaries? Who are they working for this time? Uh, anyway, Traveler, it seems like we were being followed again. You were too careless. You should have noticed those hopeless amateurs trailing you a long time ago. Thanks, Al. There's no need to thank me. I've never cared to keep track of personal favors. All I did was correct a mistake I happened to come across. It's a habit I developed at the Academia. You really gave Paimon a scare, Al Haytham. We never thought we'd run into you here. Last time we met at Port Ormos, didn't you say you were going back to the Academia? <gasps> Wait, don't tell Paimon that you're here to take us back on their orders. Oh. So you've already landed yourselves on the Academia's hit list. <laughs> I can't say that I didn't expect it. However, had I wished to turn you over to the Academia, don't you think you'd already be the Eremite's honored guests by now? Oh, right. Um, you do have a point. <laughs> you participate in the Sage's big project? Also, I just noticed it has a little contraption on his ear, right next to his Akasha, right next to his Akasha terminal. I think that... Uh, blocks him from influence. I'm willing to bet. I have no interest in running errands for that project. As a scholar, I've always belonged to the camp that promotes researcher autonomy. <sighs> and these days, you're more fascinating than anything the sages can offer. Hmm, so you were actually looking for me? Hmm, not quite. To tell you the truth, I'm still investigating the divine knowledge capsule. Unfortunately, I've run into some difficulties. Everyone says the capsule originated in the desert and was eventually moved to Port Ormos. If I am to get to the bottom of this, I must understand how the capsule first came to be. Which brings me back to you and why you're so interesting. The leader of Ainul Ahmar used the Divine Knowledge Capsule right in front of you. And upon seeing him, your expression became perplexed and you were lost in thought for quite some time. To have that kind of reaction, I think you must have realized something. Are you interested at all in sharing what you've been hiding from me? Mmm, it's because I'm shocked about those words. Don't forget me. I'll hate them. You really have a ridiculous eye for detail. What kind of person even notices or remembers stuff like that? Hmm. Well, situation is a little complicated. So that's your answer. Hmm. Well. I do work for the Academia, after all. So considering that, it is indeed wise to keep your cards close to your chest. But that does prove you do have some undisclosed information about the Divine Knowledge Capsule. Am I right? Hmm, ellipses. <sighs> no matter. Rather than simply learning the answers from you, I'd still prefer to investigate on my own. Speaking of, you two are also headed to the desert? That's right! We have the same plan as you! But we don't really any concrete goals at the moment then I'd suggest starting with Aru village it's the largest settlement in the desert so it'll probably have more resources and intel than anywhere else well would you like to head there together sounds good it's always better to travel with someone you know let's go sounds good sounds good sounds good um but I I think I'm going to handle that next. Yeah, next time. And, uh, also, um. Mm, yeah, we'll probably be doing more of this game, uh, later next week because I want to catch up on some things here. Or this week. So, anyways, um, if you're watching, uh, this on YouTube as a VOD, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're watching this on Twitch, don't forget to follow. This is Tengu, uh, signing off for now. Bye, everyone.